Future Commerce is brought to you by Octane AI. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to leverage more customer data and increase your revenue at your brand? The answer should be yes and yes. And with Octane AI, every Shopify and Shopify Plus merchant can do just that. Learn about your customers and collect buyer profile data with engaging quizzes and create personalized campaigns and flows using Facebook Messenger and SMS. Octane AI has plans for any sized business and future commerce listeners get 10% off your first six months. So go sign up right now at octaneai.com slash future. That's octaneai.com slash future. Future Commerce is brought to you by ShipBob. Put your logistics on autopilot. Go to shipbob.com slash future commerce and get started today with $500 in free shipping credits. Future Commerce is brought to you by Blue Shift. 77% of consumers make brand choices based on personalized experiences. Here's my question. Are they choosing you? Well, Blue Shift allows e-commerce companies to move from batch and blast and one size fits all experiences to something much more custom. You can find out more today about what Blue Shift does for your brand at blueshift.com slash future commerce. That's blueshift.com slash future commerce. Hello and welcome to Future Commerce, or might I say... How now, brand cow? <laughs> I'm Philip. I'm Brian. Brian hates the multiverse. That's what I found I out right before I pressed record. in the middle record. of a sentence and Philip is like, stop, I'm pressing record before you finish that. And I was about Why to Why do you say, hate the multiverse, as Brian much Lang? As I hate the multiverse, I do think that our next high concept show that we do should include the multiverse. But I'm... I, hate I mean, that. the next small, we haven't done a high, high okay, well, we've fine. done a concept show. We've we, done a concept show. That's yeah. what Step by Step was. Yeah. I mean, Step by Step is a, it's a deep dive. It's, it's a great deep dive. I wouldn't call I it I said like was. You high, said is. High concepts. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a high concept <laughs> Not show. Not a high concept. I've done a show. You know this. Mm-hmm. I did a show uh, for many years prior to COVID called Merchant to Merchant, where we got retailers to sit down in a place of retail and talk about, wait for it, retail. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was called uh, Merchant to Merchant, which is interesting because that that is a very nice segue into a Twitter poll I saw recently, uh, which was basically arguing, what do we call online store operators? It's like, is brands the right term? I don't know if that's correct. Is it merchants? Like, is it shops? What do we what do we call purveyors yeah. of goods in a digital space? I, I so for a long time I believed in the term merchant. Um, but I, I think that's the right term, isn't it? Yeah, it's so it covers everything. It covers every, that's why it's the right term because it's because so brand generic, doesn't cover everything. Right. Brand right? doesn't cover everything. A retailer does not cover everything. But at merchant kind of does, but the, but the mer- the word merchant just doesn't it doesn't really inspire me. Like the word brand is more inspiring. Even the word no, retailer the word brand, I, is like hold on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, retailer has its own connotation, right? Yes. So like these all have definitions. This is why we need to put out a glossary. In a in one version of the multiverse, which you hate, Brian Lang. I hate um, the multiverse. I'm so oh my gosh, it. why do you fr- why do you have to hate it so much? What's it's, that about? It's super played out, first of all. What did the multiverse do to you? It's it's it, it's assaulted me in every movie I've ever watched recently. <laughs> like it's But that's literally the plot of Loki is to get rid of the multiverse. Yeah, yet another oh are oh, you loving that? Well, hold on. Wait they a They destroy the multiverse in every at every turn. That's what they do. Yeah. That's their but, whole job. But but the multiverse still exists. Like it's still coming out. No, at it's me. trying to exist, and they're like, no, one timeline, sacred timeline. Sacred you timeline. you you would worship in 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 another version of the multiverse. You would worship, you know, the time lord. That is the time the, the timekeepers. Multiverse exists. It does. No, I'm saying that the timekeepers are ensuring that the multiverse does not exist, which should be your favorite thing ever. But the possibility of it existing is actually just as annoying to me. <laughs> okay, we're having three conversations. So back to the brands thing. 
in some in some existence, we have created this glossary that we've toyed around with, and it would be the beautiful to uh, our creative director's uh, delight, uh, Jesse Tyler. It would be a physical hardcover <laughs> book, um, and it would be you know just beautiful paper, and it would come cellophane wrapped, and love you, you know, Jesse. It would have an isbin, and you know all that stuff. Um, and he'd freaking love it. He would love it so much. Um, but we've created this glossary and the glossary would say brands, you know, is basically, okay, branded manufacturers, uh, retailers are, you know, uh, uh, multi-brand retailers, uh, of the old school variety now, you know, doing that online, there's marketplaces, right? There's merchants, merchants encompasses all of them because they all sell something, right? That's the right. So, so here's here's my take. Like, fine, use merchants when you want to use merchants. If you can refer to a brand, refer to a brand. If you yeah. can refer to a retailer, refer to a retailer. Like, if because you, language is important and it has meaning. Yes. So Words if you mean can things. be specific, <laughs> be specific. Sometimes, <laughs> if you want to refer to both brands and retailers, you could say merchants, or you could say brands and retailers. Are you going <laughs> to permute every single possibility? We get it. I. This, by the way, this is another midnight recording uh, of yes. Future Commerce. So good. So this this is, uh, you hate the multiverse. And at the same time, um, in this version of our reality. Uh, Dang it, no. No, I'm saying in, in, in the one that we inhabit, okay. the only one we know, uh, <laughs> the sacred timeline, Brian Lang. We, we are, uh, you, you, you took to, uh, our, uh, you, you took to our blog, uh, you wrote an essay recently about how brands, you know, you said brands. So that's why I said I'm brands having because it made sense in brands. the title. How brand. Okay. It was and cute. That's... It was a cute reference. I mean, I probably could have said how now merchant cow, but that didn't have the same <laughs> ring. Doesn't have the same <laughs> ring. I'll give you that. Yeah, how now? Brand merchant bovine. <laughs> um, you can't say cow because that means something. If you say bovine, it encompasses everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I it took a little while for me to to get there, but that's I that landed exactly the way I wanted it to. I laughed for real. Pretty that proud a of real laugh. Pretty, pretty proud of that one. Um, how, how are brands like cows? How is a raven like a writing desk? Um, is, is what Lewis Carroll would say. Uh, how are brands like cows, Brian? Brands are like cows because it's very easy for them to understand how things affect them. Technology affects them, but it's very hard for them to see how things in the world like affect others. <laughs> And okay, so, and this is based on your observation of cows. Correct. Based on how often do you come into contact with cows, merchants, or brands, whatever you want to say. Um, <laughs> basically, potato, the idea, potato. The, the idea is that it's it's very easy to to look at a te- like U.S. retailers when they go to make purchases about with technology in particular, they're constantly thinking about costs. They're thinking about how does this technology, like how can I see it measurably impact me in this moment? And costs are such an easy way to see that. Like they understand when something's going to make them more efficient. And so I should say merchants. It's not just brands. It's brands. Right. And not brands, not retailers. Yes. You actually mean it's merchants because you mean Correct. everybody. Correct. Right. So, And this uh, is based on your experience of you know right. a decade of of – you know, uh, doing solution consulting for uh, for e-commerce uh, uh, builds of all sizes for every kind of merchant. Correct. Yeah. And spending right. a lot of time talking to commerce technology companies. People in the community. Correct. Right. Exactly. So that that's the thing is like if you are like a growth tool, it's a lot harder to sell in than if you are a cost cutting or a clear ROI type tool that's not. That oh, not, OK. Yes. I. I didn't take that away from the the that wasn't the thing I read immediately in the article. The thing that got me in in the piece, which by the way you can find right now at futurecommerce.fm, uh, and sign up for Insiders, uh, which is our yeah. uh, weekly essay, uh, and uh, it's, it's it's our memo, it's our letter to you of the thing that we think is the most important thing that you should know uh, about what we're observing uh, in the world from our vantage point, which uh, 
yeah, I think is worth your time. Uh, so sign up at futurecommerce.fm slash subscribe and you'll never miss uh, uh, another piece of bovine prose that uh, <laughs> that Brian will uh, no doubt prose bestow upon or all poetry, of us. potentially. <laughs> it's true, prose and poetry. In fact, we've had both poetry and sonnet uh, uh, in, in, in Brian's, uh, heyday and a lot of philosophy. Um, it's, it's amazing and very worth your time. Uh, the thing I took away from your article, um, <laughs> sorry, art, we've, we've now said essay, blog, article, letter, and memo. So we're, <laughs> I mean, which one is the most, this is like the vocabulary episode. All of them. You tell yeah. me like, like which one means all of them. Yes. Yes. Letter. I don't. Letter. It's, it's prose. Prose. It's prose. Prose. Yes. It's prose. No, wait, that doesn't encompass poetry. So okay. Well, writing. Okay, whatever. Whatever Write, this particular written. piece was. This piece. Yes. This piece, one piece. piece. Piece is pretty encompassing. Piece is good. Merchant uh, our transcriptionist is, to piece is killing us right now. To... Kristen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um. Yes. Uh. I, so here's here's what I took away. There's a a fence on this property. Uh, I was trying to get you to the sort of like set up the story. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you tell and, the story. and and the and and the thing that you noticed was uh your kids uh come out to this property where there are cows and they the the fence exists for more than one reason. One, uh it keeps the cows sort of concentrated into a into a, a specific space, right? Right, because Correct. they could wander all over 10 acres. Um, but two, uh it also it protects your children, right? Like right. It, it, from getting too close to the cows, you would never let them that close if there wasn't a fence there. So the fence enables a more meaningful interaction right. between your kids yep. and the cows. That was like and that to me, point. that blew my mind because technology can be something that can contain, right? Yep. But it can also be something which is the cost saving piece, but. What m merchants may not be understanding is that that same technology could also be an enabler to allow a more meaningful interaction, which is the thing that your kids or consumers or customers in, in our very tired analogy here um, <laughs> that we've, we've stretched a little bit uh, pretty, pretty is the thing that they actually value. They don't care yes. about your operational efficiency. They right. don't care that your cows could be wandering all Correct. over 10 acres. They don't, they don't, they don't care about that at all. What they care about is they want to have this experience. They need a fence or they're not going to let their kids near the cows. Like I that's right. Yeah, I'm not gonna let my kids near those cows. Um, yeah. Without a fence. Big, big, big cows. Yes. Bovine. Um, anyway, great article. Uh, wonderful insight, something I took, uh, uh, I, and there's more in there, by the way. Um, and it, it really kind of extols a bunch of different points of view about the buying journey is like everybody, nobody's really honest with themselves in the way that they buy software, which I, I think is actually a really astute observation. It's like, uh, the first conversation is usually like high level and fluffy. The second conversation usually is the thing that's like, okay, well actually if we can afford X, Y, yeah. and Z. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden we like, we, we move into like the, Oh wait, we don't really want to invest in those things. <laughs> I, to, to lay upon you another tired analogy, which is not something that I, uh, had planned on talking about, but, uh, do you, do, we just instituted an allowance with my kids. Do you have an allowance with your kids? Uh, we do like a chore system. So not okay. quite an allowance, but like if you complete these tasks, you get this money. Oh, okay. That's literally the definition of an allowance. So oh, is it? I thought an allowance was just like, <laughs> oh, you get this money. And no, I mean, <laughs> I, you, I mean, I guess I, that's how it worked in my house. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure maybe there's difference too. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's different systems out there. Yeah. Okay, so we instituted an allowance system. Uh, my kids get money for doing chores, right? Or helping out or, or something. Uh, uh, various tasks. Um, what do my kids do with that money? My 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 children <laughs> this haven't is an article all unto itself. We should. I think it is actually on this one because I think I actually think our, we could. Our this kids would be... might do different things with the money. <laughs> I have to wonder what twenty five year olds who are single and live in New York City think about our writing. This is this is probably a limiting factor. We, we write probably about need cows and children. <laughs> 
cows and children. <laughs> and if and if in a previous version of this podcast, it this the episode title would have been Cows and Children, and literally no one no one would have listened to it. And that's why it will not be that. titled Cows and Children. You're into it. Oh, you're like, oh gosh, cue that up right now. Cows and kids, it's an alliteration, no less. Cows and kids. Yeah. <sighs> Mm. Mm, I like it. Um, okay, so uh, anyway, my 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 children they they receive this allowance, and there there really isn't a a, a consideration of a thing that they want most that they're like an aspiration. Hmm what the only thing that the thing that's immediate to them is I have $5. What can I spend $5 on? Mm. And that mindset I think is very akin to what I have also witnessed in the way that e-commerce investment is made is I have $75,000. What can I get for $75,000? And in reality, what I would prefer for my kids and I guess clients to also uh, to to the mind, the mentality I'd like them to have is why don't you stop thinking about the money that's available to you and start thinking about what is most fulfilling and what would be most beneficial to you? What is the thing you want the most, right? Because that conversation will lead you into the next piece, which is how can we afford that? Or what is it going to take to get there? And and then you set up things like goals. And then you set up things like, oh, uh, dad, maybe we can do extra chores. Dad, maybe we can, you know, how can I earn more money? Like you start okay. getting in a different mindset. So, And I hate to be like the, so the TV preacher, but this poverty mindset we have in e-commerce Oof. is incredibly limiting. Oof. It really is because hitting, people no. operate their channel. I'm so, I'll get on a soapbox for a second. People operate their channel from a mentality of this is all we have to work with. And the fact is that if you could actually, I, I've seen it time and again, you can earn your way and prove your way into more CapEx and additional OpEx if you can prove that you can actually grow the channel. So instead of thinking of it and backing into everything as Please, this is my budget, this is so good. what you should be asking yourself is how do I get more budget? <laughs> that, yeah. That's that, right? Okay. I'm That's gonna, how it should be. I, I loved where this is headed and I want to keep heading there, but something you said <laughs> triggered something else in me. So your tired analogy that I want to, I want to pile on top of, I'm going to actually talk about my kids and the way that they spend. And I'm going to lead that directly into something you tweeted not long from now. And actually this, okay. we weren't going to planning to talk about this, but I think this could be really fun. So my kids, when they go purchase, so I have four children and they act as like this collective to take down their parents often. Um, <laughs> like they, 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 well, gang you have up. so many of them. They are literally yes. like, like, you know, it's like, they're, oh they're man. Like a cult. So yeah. oftentimes yeah. they'll get like caught up in similar ideas of things they want to do and different kids will kind of take the lead on things. And like, they'll, they actually will, they, the way that they purchase things is they'll be like, Hey dad, uh, how much does X cost on Amazon? And then I'll be like, okay, let me go check. And then they look it up and they're like, oh, it's only $40. Okay. All right. Everyone get to work. We know what chores we need to do. We can pool our money and we could buy it. And so they, they like all work together to get Whoa. after something that they really want to have. So like recently it was rock chisels. Like they really wanted rock chisels because <laughs> my kids are really like, I'm not even kidding you. They're so, I know I've, I've heard this from you already. Right. This, this, so, is, this is like the best thing ever. My yeah. kids are like, let's go to the dollar store and find some crap we can buy. They do that too. Your they kids definitely are, do yeah. that too. But occasionally <laughs> they get on these like big hype trains. Someone yeah. leads the charge and like, how much does a rock chisel set go for? I think it's like 15 or $20, you know? Okay. And so, so yeah. they group bought, First of all, we're going to have to come back to the group buy, but yes. Yes, yeah. that's so what I'm going to. Purchase. We're not even okay. coming back to it. That's what you tweeted. I think you're totally right. I think the group buy is actually completely underrated. Um, and I know this is completely sw- <laughs> complete switch in topics here, but I hey, think these like that- midnight podcasts are like only stream of conscious. So I hope everybody's buckled in. This is only you're at minute 18. Oh, man. You're at, like I- I- IPMs, insights per minute, all time high right now on future commerce. Um, so, uh, 
go, Brian. So group buys. The group buys. You tweeted out like group buys, totally underrated experience. Uh, who wants to build an app around this? I, yeah, excellent, excellent uh, UI experience. By the way, this is where the, okay. There it is. Sorry. Let's go. Let's so there go. it is. There it is. Rock chisels. We have this. There's there's this really interesting thing that I I feel like maybe I'm the only person who does this. Uh, the Uber app. I I was in all day meetings today, all day from literally six o'clock in the morning. That's like your every day. Six, I know, but it, but but <laughs> it was extra bad. But today. <laughs> it was extra bad today. Six a.m. to six p.m. I had to get up, you know, way before the sun go into an office because we're back, baby. <laughs> Offices are back. Offices are cool again. People are in person. You can see their mouths. We it's did crazy. a happy hour not long ago. We did, actually. Like, ooh, we'll talk about that. We'll yeah. talk about that when we come yeah. back after the sponsor break. Okay. So, here, here, so I had to go to an office today. I didn't even have time to stop for a coffee. So what did I do when I got to the office? Uh, who delivers coffee? Uh, Uber Eats delivers coffee. I'm going to have a, a coffee and a pastry delivered to my office. It's going to be like 2019 all over again. It's going to be amazing. And so uh, I order on the Uber Eats, right? Uber, Uber In the Uber app, you have Uber Eats. And I go into the coffee and I there is an icon. And this is the thing that I don't know if anyone else does. There was no call out. There was no like guided walkthrough. It was a random UI like feature, like top right, top of the box, a plus sign next to like a little human figure silhouette. And I'm, th- I'm thinking to myself, what the heck does that do? I love that when you're in an app and you're like, I wonder what this button does. I, I, I did like, I just looked at it and I was like, am i gonna add like <laughs> is this gonna am i gonna add someone to this feature? order <laughs> like am i adding like i i thought intuitively this must be a group buy option but no but it wasn't prompting me for anything i'm just like i'm curiosity is going to like make me click on this thing so or i guess tap so i tapped on it and it brought up a really slick ui that was you are here you're ordering from this restaurant which is over here would you like to share, like, would you like to start a group purchase? And would you like to set a spending limit for your group purchase? And my mind was blown. Because uh, group purchases have been around forever. I did a talk, which has been referenced here on unbelievable numbers of occasions. <laughs> um, the talk that launched this podcast was a talk I gave in 2015 called The Future of Commerce. And that talk mentioned uh alexa and slack as brand new areas of engagement and opportunities for commerce uh we didn't have the word conversational commerce just yet this was like late 2014 early 2015 um and we didn't have the workforce productivity tools that we have today and i surmised hey like buying over text message is going to be a, a huge thing concierge buys are going to be a huge thing uh, buying over, uh, buying group buys in, in Slack is going to be a huge thing. Buying, you know, with your voice is going to be a huge thing. All of these things have had like false starts, but I think we're finally at a place where they can actually happen. And it turns out Uber has been doing this for a long time. Uh, it, it also turns out that, uh, companies like hero, you know, Alistair Crane, uh, CEO, he's been on this show before. Um, Hero is doing this to some degree uh, and facilitating group buys in a live stream context. Uh, we've had uh, we had Leah Wu uh, from Shop Shops on here. Uh, they are effectively engaging in group buys uh, through live stream, but not quite the same thing that I'm talking about. It's a modality that is often overlooked. That is a thing that people do in this world that I feel like could be accelerated with digital commerce if you provided the right sort of user experience. And we just don't have enough of those. Um, yeah, that tweet got me fired up. I agree with you. Uh, freaking I think, amazing. I think I think group buys are are coming. In fact, we're we're seeing them. We're just not we're not we're not calling them group buys with like 
NFTs and and like uh, like and being able to split things up into fractional ownership. We talked about this actually quite a bit. Yeah, uh, we just called it something else. But when you were like, "Wow, oh, wow!" Like this group by idea, like it's like everyone's getting kind of their own thing, but it's they're all kind of going in on it at the same time. I just think there's a lot of opportunity to sort of reset expectations about what it means to make purchases and how to get people on board with things and come together and, and provide shared experiences. And um, there's just a, there's a lot there that I think could be um, explored by, by use cases that are like um, probably a little bit less obvious than the Uber uh, Eats app. Um, the most, the, the, the least obvious infinite upside, infinite. And I mean, literal infinite, infinite upside, Brian Lang is having a group buy that you can share with another version of yourself in the multiverse. <laughs> no. Oh, now you just made me hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Philip here to tell you about our newest sponsor, Octane AI. If you are on Shopify or Shopify Plus, and who isn't, am I right? Then you need what Octane AI has to offer. I am a huge fan of guided selling, and Octane AI has tools that allow you to get to know your customers on a deeper level and collect more buyer profile data. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you can use things like shop quizzes, Facebook Messenger, SMS, and opt-in tools to allow you to engage your customer more personally so you can get on their level. More personalized campaigns and flows across all channel means more ROI. And that ROI that is driven from Octane AI is usable in other platforms with their integrations to other tools you're already using. Brands have already seen incredible results up to 16x increase in email signups and a 28% increase in AOV. That's average order value, money in your pocket. What are you waiting for? Octane AI has plans for any sized business and future commerce listeners get 10% off the first six months when you sign up. So why don't you sign up today? Go to octaneai.com slash future. Once again, that's octaneai.com slash future and tell them Philip sent you. Hey, I just want to jump in here and tell you about our new partnership, Bob. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to grow your e-commerce business by 1,200%? Of course you do. But before you tell me that that's impossible, let me tell you about ShipBob. They are a premium 3PL that offers a global fulfillment network, best-in-class technology, and reliable customer support. And here's a real-life merchant story. When Andrea Lisbona, the founder and CEO of the hand sanitizer brand Touchland, partnered with ShipBob, she was amazed by how fast and seamless ShipBob's pick, pack, and ship process really is, even as her business grew 1,200% in a matter of weeks. So outsource fulfillment to ShipBob and watch your business grow in a scalable way. Go to ShipBob.com slash futurecommerce to get started with $500 in free shipping credits. That's ShipBob dot com slash future commerce and get started today it's time once again for me to tell you about our newest partner blue shift channel centric siloed batch and blast one size fits all these are the words no marketer likes to use and no campaign that your customers want to be a part of so why did these campaigns still happen why? Well, disconnected data and disjointed technology. BlueShift's Smart Hub CDP connects data and creates personalized omni-channel experiences for leading brands like James Allen and CarParts.com. BlueShift provides catalogs for AI-driven product recommendations, advanced predictive segmentation capabilities, and creates custom audiences for your first-party data to leverage across almost any media platform so that you, the marketer, can make Batch and Blast a thing of the past. Learn more at blueshift.com slash future commerce and get your copy of the Smart Guide to Product Recommendations for e-commerce and retail for free. That's right. Go to blueshift.com slash future commerce.
Oh, wait, hold on, hold on here. So there's, there, I'm going to switch gears again, but there's going to be a pretty decent transition here. I kind of want to just go build this app because literally right now, if you go build an app for Shopify, yeah, for the first million dollars of every year, you don't pay any fees. I'm yeah, blown yeah, away. Just, like I'm like losing sh- my yeah. mind. Shopify, Shopify Unite this week. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Shopify Unite this week. Uh, there was an announcement um, from Harley Finkelstein that the uh, they are discontinuing their 20% rev share for Shopify app developers up to the first million dollars of revenue uh, for those app developers. Annually. So it, annually. So it resets per annum. So in, in the old world, up until the 29th of June uh, of 2021, you, you if you had made a million dollars of income as a Shopify app developer in the Shopify app marketplace you would have only taken home $800,000 of it. Today, you just got a $200,000 raise. <laughs> and, and, and here's, here's, here's what's insane about this. Because, uh, and Webb Smith of 2PM characterized uh, him as uh, Toby Lutka, uh, who is the founder of Shopify and CEO. Um, he called him th- uh, Thanos Lutka, which is uh, effectively... <laughs> He like snapped and uh, obliterated uh, every other e-commerce marketplace's revenue uh, share because they all eventually, if they don't do it this year, they will eventually, they all will have to retire in the same fashion, yeah. that 20% of rev- yes. revenue to keep competitive in the marketplace. Yeah. And, and you know what's what's incredible about this? Like literally everyone in the world should become an app, a Shopify app developer. Like it is. That's what they want. That, like, and they, and they, and they did it like literally like you, you and you and you, you know who I'm talking to right now. That would be you should become a <laughs> Shopify app developer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, the Oprah meme and you get a Shopify app and right, you get a Shopify right. app. That's exactly what just happened. It was Oprah. That's, that's a better comparison actually i have an alternative take okay take it i think this is a I, I think it's a brilliant move i think it's a brilliant move and i think that the strategy of it is likely how do we subsidize like rather than investing that 20 percent, like whatever revenue that would have been would likely have gone into r&d and research for us to try to pad our product manage like our product roadmap rather than that we're going to subsidize it by enabling our app developer community to find product market fit for us so that we'll build it into the core piece of the product in the future yeah there's there's some probably some truth to that i i mean well that is the law of well that is the law the the erosive nature of the e-commerce platform ecosystem well like that's that is the truth let me let me let me take a little bit less cynical view here which is to say you just i I would say you're right like r&d was just like given a huge budget increase like and 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 whether that gets pulled into the platform or not yeah Yeah. or not like because it's not all going to get pulled into the platform like some of it's going to stay outside of the platform but um, and and uh, I think there's a lot of proof of that in the Shopify world because there's a lot of stuff that I feel like I'm still recommending app for is that could totally be part of the product. Um, <laughs> but the my point in saying this is like I think that like this is going to create an exponential effect on R and D. And yes, maybe some of it gets pulled in the core product, maybe some of it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Like Shopify just just like. Like th- this is exponential. This is not linear. <laughs> I yeah, I agree. It's exponential. Um, I think the overhead of hmm, how do I say this? I think that there's the Shopify marketplace is fairly constrained given the scale of Shopify's partner ecosystem right now. I was reading through their earnings. Um uh, from Q1. And it said, uh, I wish I had it open because I would I would just read it directly, but something to the effect of 42,600 
partners referred business to Shopify in Q1 of 2021. That is an unbelievable number, okay? 42,000 partners referred business to Shopify. Now, contrast that with the number of App Store developers, which I think numbers in the 1,500 to 2,000 range. What they just did was, so they have all these partners that are referral partners for them. They just took those 42,000 partners and they said to them, there's literally nothing keeping you from also participating in the app economy in Shopify. So you're taking, you're, you're creating, you're like opening the floodgates for another, a different problem, a knock-on effect, an unintended consequence of a lot of garbage apps that are going to flood into the marketplace and make it really hard to discover the good ones. Because right now, there's a little bit of a barrier to entry. In fact, the Apple app developer program for you know a decade now had a annual fee, I think of $99 associated with it to try to keep the, to try to keep, you know, to have some barrier to entry to require, uh, uh, it's now after midnight. I, my words aren't coming together basically to keep the grifters out. I don't know how to say it any other way. Um, and, and, you know, having a little skin in the game is not a bad thing because you policing a marketplace. Sure at that scale becomes sure. incredibly expensive yeah. and really difficult. Yeah, I think back to and like whack-a-mole Mag- after some time. Magento Connect days. <sighs> like Oh gosh, yeah, but that know. was also Magento Connect was a free yes, marketplace right. for anyone and with no rev share. Right. No, I, I I hear you loud and clear. I see what you're saying. Um let me let me add a flip side to what you're saying because I do think there's some Yeah, no, I, I want the alternative take because I the feel like mine side is on that simple. is that uh, if you look at a lot of the other commerce ecosystems as they matured, talent has become a big problem. Mm-hmm. And I think what the other thing that you've done here is you've opened the market to bring in new developers. Um, and I think, I believe for high quality mid market Shopify development, like there's actually quite a bit of competition for, for good developers. Um, and so I believe that this is going to bring a new set of, of talent into the ecosystem that can be trained up to that level. Um, and so you're making commerce really, uh, appealing to a new set of developers that are going to see the opportunity to make money. And I think that's a really good thing for their commerce ecosystem. I, I think you're right. Um, Shopify has an escape velocity, like they've achieved escape velocity, and they are so influential now. Out, like they they have achieved a scale and have achieved a critical mass to where there really is, like that. I think I don't think that the things that have befallen other e-commerce platform ecosystems could possibly happen to Shopify at this scale, there is now inertia. This thing is so giant <laughs> and has such a, a gravity around it. It's a, it's a gravity well. There's like, it will continue for the next 10 years, even if they stagnate in every way. And in, in where other platform ecosystems you know, screech to a halt after, you know, one bad failed upgrade. And that, that is one of the, the things that I don't think Shopify, like, is it because Shopify is executing perfectly? I don't think so because there are actually a lot of frustrated people with Shopify. It's like one of the other announcements at Unite was, you know, a, like it's the third year in a row wherein they've announced, you know, something about sections everywhere, which I'm going to pretend like I know what that means. Um, (laughs) I could probably surmise what it means, but um, you know, there have been lots of empty promises in the Shopify system over the years. And also Shopify is eating their own partner's lunch. You know, this, the, 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 uh, recharge and the, um, and, uh, uh, and, and subscription payments of the world are now, you know, uh, you know, being put out to pasture. There's a lot of those kinds of things. It's like, there's not everybody, not everybody is so happy with like, Shopify. And that's, that's, just the law of platform ecosystems like well, eventually you will comp- it, like the platform will compete with its own 
the you know with its own app developers who made them successful let me add on to this though like think about think about who shopify actually competes with so yes it competes with other platforms but if you were going to stack shopify up against a single company who who would that company be amazon yes and so think about what is that because that's true or is it because that's what i i'm buying into the you know investor memo Yes, yeah, you you may or may not be buying into the investor memo, but let me let me put let me say that Amazon does everything in house. I mean, they do make some acquisitions. Um, they're building all of that infrastructure, and they're supporting all of the merchants that come on their platform. And the and it's all Amazon. What Shopify is basic, basically saying is, we want to democratize that. And so the experience that you get on Amazon as a merchant with Shopify is being democratized. Now, there are still some problems that they're going to face going forward. Like they don't have a marketplace. Like it's not like you just search all Shopify stores and find all the things that are on Shopify. Um, But how, I mean, how many years do you think they've debated turning something like that on? Like it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be a far stretch for them to do it, and maybe someday they will. But they don't really have to right now. Like they are no, doing no, they don't. everything that they need to do to empower merchants to sell stuff online, and they're going to continue to do that. And they've just accelerated the heck out of that that opportunity. Like, the, and, well, the other thing that they've done is, um, I uh, again in the uh, Q one earnings uh that i read through there was uh a line item around how much capital they're deploying with shopify capital and something like two billion under management yep and that's an incredible amount of money in fact uh it's the same amount of money that they raised at their ipo (laughs) (laughs) and uh you know in the words of michael scott my how the (laughs) turntables and (laughs) So it's 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 a really interesting thing. Like not only, and this is where the you know the 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 Shopify mantra of arm the rebels, uh, I think, does come to play. Is where you know they're not only providing them with the tooling, but with the capital, um, you know, the non dilutive capital. By the way, uh, to to do this, um, right. it's impressive and a little bit frightening um but only in in the only in the fact that they're they're able to do it at scale they're they're giving a lot of people uh opportunity to be to be entrepreneurs and be and and remove objections uh to becoming entrepreneurs or having some sort of uh form of entrepreneurial uh, access to entrepreneurial success and that's only a good thing my my th- my my thought is in a world where we've basically just tested universal basic income does that actually harm amazon at all like does it is it an existential threat to amazon absolutely not because amazon apparently uh this was a news story this week uh has deployed has built in the past 2 years alone Amazon has built 140 million square foot of distribution center and warehouse space, which is equivalent to Walmart in its entirety of the last 50 years. Right. And I don't believe, I just don't believe the idea, like I just don't believe it. And the numbers don't show it. If you look at, you know, the world's second most valuable business, that Amazon is existentially at it threatened by a Shopify. I believe that this is all, it's just, there's so much liquidity and there's in, in the world at the moment, there's so much money to go around that they can all grow uh, uh, and coexist. That's what I believe. Absolutely. And I think that merchants and entrepreneurs love having both of them because it offers yeah. multiple channels to make money. And so they can mm-hmm. get into one and they can make money and they get into another and they can make money. And all you have to do is like add, add channels to grow your business. And so as an entrepreneur, like, you know, we talked about how in 2020, 
like uh, entrepreneurship was actually at an all time low, and that we expect with the you know the K shaped recovery to see uh, growth, and, and it was already happening. Um, I well, it was it was 2019 going into 2020. Right. 2020 was like the number of new businesses that had been launched has ne- had never been seen before. Right. It was like right. Right. new right. business sorry. filings was at an all time high. That's that's right. yeah. That's sorry. Timeline off. Timeline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm just making sure that we were know, multiverse right. and all that. Actually, you know, if we were in the multiverse, <laughs> looking back, you know, and we're in, and you know, let's say we could get ahead to the future, and you and I were there, and we look back on now. Mm-hmm. You know, I see this this moment as a as a moment where like, wow, that actually did a lot of good things for for the for the future. Um and in and, and that in that timeline. Oh yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um there's so many other things. I, I'm 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 actually really bored with the Shopify talk. Um I <laughs> congrats them. You know who is existentially threatened by all of this? is the mall <laughs> the mall's in trouble <laughs> that's that's who's existentially threatened because uh legacy retailers um so we're in this we're in a moment right now i know we're called future commerce but let's let's call it the present commerce for a moment right now there has never been more excitement to go out into the real world and brick and mortar has tailwinds for the first time in who knows how long yes. a decade which means, you know, by extension, the e-commerce has headwinds for the first time in a decade. And so most everybody is going to want to go shop in the real world. You see this play out in the earnings of a company like Best Buy, who, for whatever reason, uh, have performed a monumental turnaround and have, have become sort of a beloved destination for a consumer wanting to buy electronics and other various accoutrements. The, 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 the shocking thing to me is that they were buying at Best Buy before the pandemic. They bought even more from Best Buy post pandemic. And if I had to guess, they're going to buy even freaking more in person now as we come into a recovery. And it's because of the power of defaults. Like we are, we have, we have default behaviors that we're programmed with we like certain retailers because we like them because they're familiar to us because that's what we seek. Like mm. we seek some, we have some kind of a a hardwired learned behavior to frequent certain retailers once we've begun to frequent them. We'll even take that behavior to digital channels and go frequent them there. That's why Home Depot and Lowe's have lines coming out the wazoo uh, when, you know, when, when you could do uh, curbside pickup. It's like... you. The, the our defaults are there and so maybe there's a little bit of a leveling here and maybe shopify doesn't bode so well uh in the back half of this year when everybody is so excited to go shop with you know mom you know mom and dad's old brick and mortar store they're going to shop there online too and that means you know hey maybe the adobes and the saps and the oracles of the world who do deployed monolithic e-commerce that the big boys use um and not these, you know, walled garden, you know, SaaS platforms that, you know, mom and pops use. Maybe that's, it's time for them to shine a little bit. It could be, it could be. I think there's also pressures from other angles though. So like you've got such as Etsy blowing up like, uh, Oh and, yeah. And, and so, you know, you think about the mom and pops that are out there and the creator economy and what that's become. And I just think that there's going to be a lot of those companies that because they are companies. Uh, that are going to graduate to Shopify. Um, and so there's, there's sort of, there's pressures from all different directions, I think right now. Uh, and all Wait, of them. Who's, oh, 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 you mean the mom and pops that are graduating from Etsy out of Shopify? To, Etsy into Shopify. Like they're, they started oh, on I Etsy. See what you're saying. They got their start on Etsy. They're DIYers. They said, Hey, I can make something cool and sell it. I'm going to make some money on that. Absolutely. They saw a market pick up and boom, they're like, wait a minute. I've got a business on my hands. Um, and so all of a sudden they're like, well, how do I get, you know, beyond Etsy? And so the immediate next step is Shopify. And we've already seen this a lot, I think. Um, but Etsy is on a tear right now. <laughs> and, you know, they're acquiring more and more secondhand markets all throughout the world. 
Um, and I, and it is late, so I'm blanking on the one they just acquired, I believe, to access the South American market. Um, uh, that was just, I should probably look it up, but, uh, Etsy is, Etsy is making moves. Um, I think that this is a, it's, it's actually is a worldwide yeah, phenomenon. Brazilian marketplace. And right. so I see Shopify, I agree with that. Uh, yeah. looking to, to the future isn't just about the U S and anyone, and they've done very well in the U S but they actually, I like, they, there's a lot of room for them internationally, I think. Um, and so mm. as we look to the future of Shopify, I see it as a global empowerment, um, and not just, uh, like, a uh, you know, North American phenomenon. So that's, uh, that's, there's, there's pressures from all angles that I think could drive this in a, in a number of different directions. And that's why it's, it's good to think about all these, these things. I, I also get, want to get back to something you just said about default behaviors, because I believe you're. You're absolutely right about default behaviors. Um, I do think they're they're that we're learning them now. Like my kids, default behavior is Amazon. That wasn't that wasn't true for me growing up. When I wanted it's to true. buy something, my default behavior was not Amazon. <laughs> um, Hold on, what was your default? Uh, my default Walmart? behavior was probably the grocery store. <laughs> I don't know. I, Wait, like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I spent my money on weird stuff as a kid. I liked. Okay, I don't know. you're you're you're, you're not, not the, the don't, ideal don't focus. Look at me, but probably group. malls, right? Malls were default behavior. And Maybe, but I, I I I I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I I was gonna say like Sears. So yeah, the mall. Um. Yeah. You know, I think about where I bought my first hand tools, and it was Sears. I bought Craftsman stuff, yeah. you know. Um, I, where did I buy our first appliances? Sears. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of that, right? Target. Target. Uh, yeah, you know what? Our wedding registry now, which is like 17, 18 years ago. Um, just had my, that was all target, 13. you know, that was, uh, it was target. We did some mall stuff. We had like a William Sonoma thing going on. Yeah. Literally nobody, one person, my, my older sister, she bought from William Sonoma from us. Yeah. So my, my point in saying this is that, that new behaviors can be learned based off of what's happening in the world at the time. I feel like Etsy is actually one of those new behaviors. Um, in fact, my kids I ended up, I ended up taking them to Etsy to look for their, their uh their rock chisels at one point or no 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 sorry they're augers they wanted augers <laughs> that was a different augers one. yeah <laughs> what the I know, my, cows and augers I and know. rock chisels oh my yeah oh my is right uh they're they're I'm, I'm, they've got like hand saws i've got you know they're, they're into building things and making things and um, I've got like a pile of bricks in my backyard that they like do stuff with. They've, they've broken most of them with their chisel, but they still make things with them. I don't know. Uh, my kids are builders or makers. Um, the, the, yeah. And so Etsy, I think is like a, a net new behavior for a lot of, a lot of people. And I think it's actually spilling over into their kids. And so it will be a default behavior going forward into next generations to look for, for handmade and direct to creator, um, but, but uh, I, I, I still, I want to get back to something with, that you said there. And I think that default behaviors are a part of like a lot of the nostalgia purchasing and a lot of the nostalgia waves that we're seeing right now, because mm -hmm. people right now in this moment, especially post pandemic are looking for things that do bring them comfort and familiarity and they want to get back into the world. And like, so Yes, malls are in trouble. And like, uh, we just had a mall not far from us in Auburn that where the owner went um, bankrupt. And, um, no. I, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, like, I think Thanks. malls, malls are, malls are in, in a, in a lot of trouble. Um, I, right now, I almost rather be in a strip mall than in a mall. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's extremely true. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, well, hey, let's wrap this one section up. I sure. would say that we're because I think everybody gets it. Um, I I think we're. I don't know. We'll see here. You you know what the real travesty is here? I and I, I just I don't know why I'm on this train of thought, but the real travesty is that. 
coming up on, well, now it's been three years. You know, three years ago, Adobe acquired Magento. And the largest source of creativity tools in this freaking planet, you know, the company that enables creativity in every form of entertainment that exists, right? Every single thing that you see that is designed in this world uh, by professionals everywhere and aspiring uh, artists alike. Like, this is the creativity company could have owned the creative expression of commerce. And they've had three years to do it. They could have married a creative suite to, like, far outpace any other you know, front end experience in, in e-commerce. And, you know, they've just done nothing with that. And that's so sad. Like it's, 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 and in that same three years, um, you know, they've, they've, they're sort of allowing, uh, dominance in the marketplace to go to a few SaaS players, Shopify in particular, uh, who are busy trying to actually enable, like they're not trying to create a, uh, in, uh, a ecosystem uh, of bundled s- enterprise SaaS software. Like what they're what they're trying to do is they're trying to create like a really powerful single like ecosystem. They're like building the community that everybody else thought that Magento had, which is absolutely an incredible twist of fate. Um, let me let, let which let's blend these two conversations. Because I think there's something interesting that could happen out of this. And so we talk about the travesty of malls and you know and what, what happened with them. And we talk about the travesty of Magento and, and with the, the the potential there. Um <laughs> travesty uh, yes. of Magento. There's a show title. <laughs> but um but don't know. Do hey do Kaylee, do not name this show <laughs> The Travesty of Magento, please. The the question that I have is if we took digital commerce and physical commerce, which, you know, digital is having its moment is that it's more of a moment than it's ever had the past 18 months. And we take physical, which is, as you said, has tailwinds, massive tailwinds. Yeah. What does that experience look like coming up here? Because if it's not a mall and it's not a strip mall, um, you know, what, what does that blend of digital and physical look? How is that going to be manifested in the world going forward? Is it going to be, you know, some, some like open air experience that's basically mall, but it's not a mall and it's not a strip mall, but it's not a strip mall. And there's going to be digital experiences that kind of guide you through it. Like what, what is this crazy world that what, what is not well, for- a mall? that is also related to digital commerce that is going to be the next version of how people go out and experience what, what is effectively shopping as, as entertainment because that- there was a, uh, there was an experience that we mentioned. I, I feel like we're talking around something and four years from now, we're going to go pull this out and be like, we didn't know, but we were talking about this about X at the time and we were talking like we didn't know what to expect, but we basically were predicting this. And um, there was this really strange experience. I remember us bringing up on the show a couple years ago in like the UAE as like an installation where you had to like walk through this sensory portal that, you know, basically kind of like followed you down like a, a moving walkway like it was you know one of those like people mover yes, type things. i remember this conversation and yeah and it was like it was an art installation but there was some commerce like level component to it around advertising and uh i was i i think i remember saying it reminded me of uh 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 not a scanner darkly what's the movie with tom cruise where he gets his eyes ripped out minority report that oh minority yeah yeah <laughs> Yes. I couldn't I came up with scanner darkly, but I couldn't come up with minority report. Don't don't ask me how. Um yes, minority report. And uh yeah, that 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 particular um you know, this this sort of like IDing, you know, and targeted advertising like in the real world wherever you happen to be. Um oh yeah, there's like that isn't that that's what we call fidgetal. 
Brian. Fidgetal. T-H-Y. Fidgetal. Oh, man. Fidgetal. It's physical it digital. Of, like, I don't know, fidget spinners or something horrible like that. Like, well, there's there's a, 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 there's a, a, a musical mode called Phrygian, uh, which... Uh, is used in a lot of heavy metal, uh, which has a sound to me, which is a thing that I, I often, when everyone says, uh, fidgetal, I, I immediately hear like a, a ripping, you know, metal guitar solo in Phrygian over some, you know, minor key. Um, if, if Chris picks up on this in this edit, Chris drop in like, you know, some nasty Opeth, you know, Phrygian, you know, solo right here. Um, I can't wait to hear that. Anyway. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Nobody actually listens to our show, and that works for us. They, <laughs> they're like, let's just ship it. I mean, especially ship, 55 baby. minutes in, or however far we are now. Like, I don't even oh, know. we're going to keep yeah, going. So this is where... going. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, I think, we're, I think we're, we're, we're dancing around something, and I think you're right. Like The, the actual expression of this is going to be very interesting. Is it just a minority report experience? Where, like, I no, I don't know. I did, yeah, that looked horrible. Stupid. Like, I... I don't. I don't want that. I don't want to be personally targeted for f based off of everything that I purchased as I walk through the world. Like, no, uh, I I disagree one hundred percent. I could not disagree with you more. I want that because what is happening is because of IDFA and the cookieless future that we're all facing is ads are getting less contextual and therefore less relevant, and that means I notice them more. Like, that's the problem. I'll give you a good example is walking around, you know, Seattle with my family and, you know, there's billboards I got to cover my kid's eyes up for, which is not a thing I'm used to seeing. Like we, we, you know, wouldn't it be amazing if the billboard was contextual to the people around it at that time and could make it more, you know, relevant to, uh, to, you know, advertise some television show that my kids would love to watch. Like I'm praying for that. (laughs) That. That would be better. It would be worse. better than what we have now, but mostly I'm just like, I just don't want to be advertised to all the time. Like I like that just constant barrage. This, and now this a word why. from our sponsors of this podcast. <laughs> Ship Bob. I, I, Congratulations, by the way, to Ship Bob for raising 200 million. Yes. Uh, that's amazing. An amazing, amazing accomplishment. And um, hey, why didn't you look up your boys? Um <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call next time. <laughs> you know, we'll we'll you know we're we're, we're doing a little angel we are. these days. Like we should be we should be you know we should be at least seventh or eighth on the list. I feel like Ship Bob is probably a past angel at this point. I feel like they might be past. Oh angel. no, I know, but <laughs> yeah, you kind of bring some folks along for the ride That's when true. you know. It's true. Well, f- yeah. I feel like this is a really good discussion, actually. Though, like the idea of like like ads being placed in a, in like contextual moments all the time uh we need that i I, want that i i i I don't know i don't know i I still i've got to think about this a little bit more i agree with you i don't want ads that don't make sense to me but i also don't want everything in the world to advertise to me maybe that's already happening i'm sorry brian that is the world we live in and the freaking business that you run with me (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, okay. Okay. Actually. So this gets back to something else we've talked about, which is like where luxury is headed. Like basically if you don't want to be advertised to all the time, you have the opportunity to opt out. And that is the definition of luxury um, or part of the definition of luxury is not constantly being barraged with ads and, and things that you don't want to see. It's the silence that uh, of of money that maybe oh yeah ooh the silence of money Ti- I, show title there we go show title hey kaylee there you go <laughs> listen i agree but i also kind of disagree because there are inspiring ads that i'm glad that i've seen in my lifetime yes right that's like, true tracksmith so just good. had an ad <laughs> it's so good it's like one of my favorite ads of all time we need to we need to sample that. We, so good. Um, this is late dude, night. This is feature conversation. Tracksmith had this ad. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell. So they did this short film with Malcolm Gladwell, um, and they did this just incredible series of ads that they've been running during the Olympic trials. Um, and 
you know that is a brand that's that just is always firing on er- like all cylinders always doing something so unbelievably authentic it reminds me like their ad their advertising and their creative reminds me so much of nike but in a in a much in a totally different way like um but what an incredible what an incredible thing also so many of their athletes are not just runners yeah they have uh they have hammer throw and shot putters that are also wearing track smith in the so like basically like a lot of track and field it's it's sort of the 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 whole variety of athlete in the track and field variety you know uh uh, disciplines that track smith is accommodating um and supporting in the olympic trials so they're they're showing really strong their ads are incredible and i'm glad to have seen them and i'll tell you what i i wish they i wish i saw more ads like that yes so maybe that's what it is like it, I, I think there's an opportunity to like. I don't want to live in an ad-free world. Yeah. Discovering things is actually really is 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 awesome when it means something to you and when it's exciting, when it's relevant. Yes, I agree with that. 100%. I don't feel like I just quoted Google. Like that is that is <laughs> Google's entire value prop, right? Is is of its ad product is, you know, ads are actually enjoyable when they're relevant. Yes. And I think it's true. No, I agree. When I see an ad that I think is like really good and it and it takes me to go to buy something that I'm really happy with, then I'm really happy that I saw that ad. Um it's just there is so purple infrequent. is running incredible uh commercials right now. Have you seen the purple commercial where the the lady's like, uh, who likes memory foam? Like that's they're so hot and apparently it like remembers things. <laughs> 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 the fact that they're like weaponizing memory foam to be like it remembers what you did on it that's i know that's brilliant advertising like it's just brilliant i've never cared about mattress advertising not once in my life and i'm like it has now made me think i might want to change my mattress because it remembers everything that i've done on it because it's memory foam brian oh man don't get me started on mattresses <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah exactly if there is like uh uh the, the parable it's the uh, uh brian uh, you know <laughs> brian doesn't just have one mattress brian has six mattresses you know indeed you speak truth i, I feel, like, I feel uh, like you don't have just one mattress brian you've had six mattresses it's almost like the billy billy goats graph it's like you know the, the first goat comes and it's like oh no you you should get the next one and like, you know, that's the, that's, that's sort of the, the Brian Lang mattress story. Uh, I feel like, I feel like to sort of wrap this you all have a purple up mattress. What's that? I just, as I forget, did you have a purple mattress? No, we didn't get purple. So I guess we're going to have to you get got a Zionist. Through. Yeah. Zionus is one. Uh, we got Casper. Is that what you wound up with? We got at, at the end. We got, we got, we got a whole bunch. I think we did end up. No, I want to know what you have right now. I think Zionus. I think it's Zionus. Okay. Yeah. So this is what's insane is that. We went to the Amazon four star in Seattle and um, I, I, we did like one of the days that we were in Seattle with the, the, the kids uh, was we went down to the spheres, right? And right next to the spheres, of course, cause right there, it's like Amazon headquarters, like ish area. So you've got the Amazon go right there. And my kids like basically shoplifted a bunch of things. It was awesome. And um, what a thrill, right? Um, and then there's an Amazon four star, like right next door. Um, and they have an Amazon four star here in Palm Beach Gardens. This one is very different. It has like a whole little mattress section with Zionist mattresses. The act of physically seeing the Zionist like part of the store, the branded experience moved Zionist in my brain from one area to another. Oh boy. Seeing it in person and seeing the display changed the way I thought of the brand because when I see it on Amazon, I'm like <laughs> when I see it in person, I'm like, "Oh wow. That's pretty Oh like, my gosh, dude, you know what it, you've just done? You've just yeah. summed up the conversation we had like two conversations ago, which was like what happened? <laughs> which is what? What happens 
in the future between physical and digital and why does it matter? And you just nailed it. Mm. Like maybe it's a set of curated stores that are like effectively Amazon four stars where you have the best products. They're all rated online. It's like the yeah. new department store. I think the, the Amazon four store concept has legs beyond Amazon. This, mm. this might be it. The best stuff that's rated really well online ends up in basically curated department stores that are not driven by buyers. They're driven by consumers. And mm. consumers then have the opportunity to see what everyone else is talking about online and get a sense for it in person. And, and it's going to change the way that they think about the brand as more than just like an internet brand and to like, a, hey, this is part of my canon of brands that I trust. Is that so there are examples of this today? Uh, you know, I've been to show fields, right? I've been to um, neighborhood goods. Right. There's mm -hmm. a concept I think that open called brick and click um, that are like DTC malls to some degree. It's like come experience the Internet only brands in real life. Yep. Right. Like. But a lot of them are is, driven still by like experienced designers and whoever they can get in, like whoever they they can like sell to be in the physical space. Hmm. Um, but, but I agree with That's you. That's true. I do agree with you. I think that they're onto something. This is all early days. I think this is, but, but uh, yeah, these are all like right. kind of leading up to this next generation of experience. Well, this is where, so who has the data? Let's start there. Yes. So the, well, the four star data. concept, yeah. <laughs> let's say that the four star, well, who else has the data? Shopify. Okay. No. Shopify has transaction data. That's true. You're they right. don't have sentiment data. You're right. Uh, Yatpo. Okay. Yatpo has data. Yatpo has data. Bizarre voice. Yatpo. Uh, Returnly data. has Returnly data. Returnly has data. That's a really good point. Okay. Who just bought Happy Returns? Uh, I forget. Was... Is it um, PayPal? PayPal bought Happy Returns. You know, PayPal has sentiment data now. Yep. Um. They also have the trans. They also have the payment and transaction and refund like story. You know, they could piece together sentimentality mm -hmm. um, uh, and do some sentimental analysis around certain retail. Well, hold on. Let's use the right term now. Merchant. Certain merchant experience <laughs> <laughs> uh, brought us full circle. Um, there are lots of companies that I think that have product level sentiment data that could facilitate you know, either a data product or, or a retail partnership that Whoa. would allow, that would do, like, can you imagine Yatpo powering a Nordstrom four-star? Like, this is actually getting me kind of excited right now. Like, this is actually really cool. <laughs> I told you, highest insights per minute of any Future Commerce episode ever. How now? Brand Brand cow. cow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so cool. Cute. I want to know uh, what you all think about the future and would you shop a Yotpo mall? Uh, if you're Moise Ali, I know you hate Yotpo, so you're probably, well, you're probably not listening to this episode, Moise, but if, uh, if you were, uh, tell me why Junip could possibly do this better and I'll tell you a hundred reasons why they couldn't. Um, and if you say bizarre voice to me, I'm just going to laugh at you. So, uh, but at, at any rate, if you have a, a a particular hot take on this. I want to hear about it. Drop us a line at hello at futurecommerce.fm. I'm wrapping up, by the way. I know. Uh, I can go. <laughs> uh, and if you don't want us to wrap, wrap up and you never want us to wrap up, there's 240 <laughs> other episodes of this podcast and uh, and six seasons of deep dives in a series we call... Uh, uh, Step by step. I almost said merchant to merchant. <laughs> step by step is uh, is another series that we have here at Future Commerce. And our sister podcast, hosted by uh, the venerable Lee Green, she hosts an amazing deep dive with CEOs called Stairway to CEO. Uh, incredible interviews with uh, mostly direct-to-consumer founders uh, and, uh, and, and brand operators. I know you're going to love it. Uh, you can find hundreds of hours of content in every other podcast we've ever made uh, over at futurecommerce.fm. And, uh, and you can subscribe to all of our insights. We get uh, 
two newsletters in your box, uh, in, in, <laughs> in your digital box, uh, every it's that digital inbox is the word I'm looking for twice a week, uh, uh, Wednesday ish and Friday. Uh, and one is called insiders. That is our, our deep dive uh, essay that gives you, uh, a, a really detailed analysis on something that we, uh, really care about in this particular case this week is cows. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then the senses, which comes out every Friday, uh, which talks about, uh, brands, uh, and the products they create and how they interact with us in the physical world around us. And that's called The Senses. comes out every Friday. Every bit of this can be found at futurecommerce.fm. If you want to support the show and everything we do, you can do that by, uh, takes no time at all. Give us a five star over at Apple Podcasts uh, and uh, tell your friends to check out Future Commerce. That's it. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>